Here's what Katie Porter had to say uh, yesterday about this COVID relief. And tell me if this message, which had, which I think is incredibly poignant from, um, from Katie Porter, if that is consistent with what the leader of the Democratic uh, Democrats in the House said today. One of the things that's making me really frustrated right now is when I hear people talk about this as stimulus. Let's be clear, it is not stimulus money to give people money so they can feed themselves, so that they can keep heat on in the winter, so that they can avoid eviction. That's not stimulus. That is basic needs that we're talking about meeting. And you're absolutely right that it's not enough to just do some unemployment. It's not enough to do more with food assistance. People need that direct assistance. And all of the research on this interestingly shows that direct cash money to families, allowing them to decide how to spend it, actually is the most efficient use of our tax dollars, partly because that money can't be distorted by special interests like Wall Street banks along the way. How do you reconcile that message that we need, there is an urgent need by the American public, we have, we have images of cars, you know, uh, lined up on, on highways for miles waiting to get food assistance. They're, they're breaking records in Boston in terms of like the food banks. How do you reconcile that with the idea that because of vaccines coming, none of this is going to be as urgent as it was a month ago? I mean, it's just it, it's it's incoherent messaging. We have like a situation where there was a failure and now the attempt to sort of rectify or at least to shift blame off that failure is creating another set of problems in terms of messaging in the politics. Well, she's like a D-list PR person because now Biden's in charge. Oh, the message has to change entirely because the good team is in the White House now. I, I, I don't know. I mean, where do you go with this, Brandon? Because well, if they, like, how do you how do you justify more money in two weeks or a month if you have the opportunity to do it? And they're doing the same thing. She's doing the same thing, too, with this continuing resolution where they're trying to push it to October. And you don't know. You don't know if you're not going to control the Senate. So why would you make a deal now for October as opposed to, let's say, January 25th? Well, because if you shoot yourself in the foot, you don't have to run the marathon. Right. So, you know, if, if you if you make it so you have a legitimate excuse, I think that this has been something I've realized the most about the Democratic Party and how they keep their voters in check. They just paint themselves into a corner. They paint themselves into a place where at the end of the day, they can make a pretty legitimate argument that, well, based on the tools we have now, we can't do much to help you. And if you try to argue about what would happen, what's happening right now, they'll look at you like that's not productive use of your, our time because now we're here. And so these conversations about what they should be doing now are either ignored only to, you know, eight months, 10 months, three months in the future, be treated as though like, well, you know, everyone can play Monday morning quarterback, even though these, I would argue that these, you know, plays, these strategies are obviously flawed. They're obvious, they're obviously flawed in ways that make it very easy for people like me to come out and say, like, it seems like they're trying to lose. Like, you know, it seems like they're trying not to help people and they're trying to do so in a way that is geared towards making it seem like it's everyone else's fault. Either the personal responsibility of the person who's in the food line, once they're vaccinated, to be unable to find a new job and, you know, pay off everything that they accrued in the time off work. Or, you know, it's Republicans. It's just never really able to stick to the Democrats. And I think that we need to start talking about, like, how do we, you know, at least use this time where a Democratic Party is in charge and can be theoretically said to be working on something positive to, you know, hold them to hold them to that. Like if, you know, we do this all the time, we, we hold their feet to the fire, but doesn't ever seem to stick, doesn't ever seem to work. But I think this time, you know, it's real for people. You know, the feel good wave of emotion that is usually felt by people when Biden or Obama or Democrat du jour take over after, you know, Trump or Bush is going to be soured quite rapidly by the realities of, you know, COVID-19 housing market collapsing, you know, jobs, jobs numbers still not being where they need to be. People still being sick. You know, we're running out of hospital rooms in basically every state now. Uh, you know, I, the. One of the things and you mentioned Obama, and I th definitely think that Biden's going to have um, has already 